Okay, and welcome back to part two of the Kadash playthrough video. Just got out of the uh, labyrinth after fighting that um, Kraken enemy. And now you see, as I had mentioned earlier, I'm buying a lot of the herbs and the antidotes. I would bought a few of the antidotes earlier, which a few of them were automatically used, but at this point I figured I must, might as well uh, like fully stock up on them. Because as I, I as I had mentioned briefly in the other video, um, uh, just the other day I had actually tried to beat this, and I basically had died just by a little tiny bit, and that wasn't really fun. So uh, I figured by this white hook or crook I was going to beat the boss. And now the funny thing, even though the kraken's dead and the uh, girls uh, saved. She still says the same thing, and you would honestly think that, um... Sure, the mermaid likes the old lady, you'd think she'd come back and say, Yeah, um... I'm alive, and now watch this lady. The Kraken is dead, I guess that makes my uh, threat kind of moot. So I just find it kind of weird that, um... And I was just trying to see if that guy uh, said anything different, but... I find it kind of weird that... Like, that one lady, when when the Kraken's dead, she changes what she says. But the old lady doesn't seem to know that everything is fine again, or that, like, the Kraken's dead at least. And you'd think if the mermaid cared about the old lady so much, she would, like, tell her the truth. She wouldn't just be like, well, uh, I'm a mermaid, I'm going out to the sea, take my fins, do good in the world. You know what I mean? It seems rather inconsiderate of her. But now that we're all powered up, you'll see that I have uh, 120 hit points and 120 uh, magic points now. So there's a lot more to go around now at uh, level 11. So it makes a lot, uh, few things a lot easier, but the only thing to keep in mind is there are 20 levels in this game in total that you can earn by getting experience. So it's not like... Anything is going to really slant the game so badly in your favor that you're going to break it. Well, unless for some reason you're you're such a masochist that you uh, spend like three hours in the first scene with the pig guys and get up to level 20. Then I'd imagine like the whole game would kind of be a bit off kilter because... You basically would be facing level one, level one to five enemies and you would be... Uh, and I, I really just didn't even mean to go in there at all. But you'd basically be facing level 1 or 5 enemies, and uh, you would be level 20. That's the only way to really slant this game in your favor that much. But now we're going to move on to the uh, third continent, if you will. Since, like, the, the place with the pig guys was the first, the place with the uh, guys that throw the bones was the second, and now this is the third continent. And now these are the gnomes. Now the ones with the sacks on their back kind of remind me of, if you've ever played Golden Axe, when you go into the uh, thing between levels, there's these little squirrels, or maybe even they're gnomes, I'm not really sure, but I always thought they looked like squirrels with like sacks on their back, and that's what these guys remind me of. And of course, if you saw that precipice that I was trying to climb up before, it, uh, there's no way I could get up, and that gnome back there told me what I need to know, that I get this, uh, string from this worm, and I'll be able to climb up. And now this is another thing I I'm doing here to, uh, kind of ensure I'll actually win the game, is buy as many of these, like, horns as possible. Or was it a bell? Yeah, it's a bell. As possible, and, uh, boost my health as much as I possibly can. So... There's very little chance I will die due to uh, running out of health. But another thing that this uh, this Chovin guy told me is that um, there's a way to the other side of the there's a way to, to the other side of the what do you call it the uh, forest, which uh, is said to be unpassable by just simply um, going past that precipice. But you know, it's one of those underhanded things. It's like, 
Yeah, if you want to get where you're going, you're gonna have to kill our worm, so... Yeah, it, it, it benefits them, of course. And now these rock guys are really annoying. You have to hit them quite a few times, and if, of course you were a lot lower level than I am now. It'd be a lot harder than, um, what it is now, and... If you haven't guessed it, we've reached the, uh, the third and final major grinding point that I do in this game. And if you're wondering, this, this, uh, whole, like, grinding thing that I do in these, uh, first two videos at least, I worked that out within maybe two or three days here, figuring out how's the best way to level up. I kind of did the, uh, get to level five in the first, uh, part there, like, the first time I had played it again after so much time. But these other grinding things I kind of figured out, because they were just places you could easily level up. And I got from level 11 to level 16 here. And now the way that I play, that's the uh, last time I'm going to have to do any, like, really major grinding. There's a couple of points here and there, I believe you'll see one of them in, like, the fourth video where... There are, like, a bunch of, uh dragons and I kill a few of them so I can get up to level 19, but that's just about all I do for even like the minor grinding in this. And of course if you're if you're new to RPGs or you don't know the particular term, grinding is a term that uh, refers to any time that you basically spend continuously fighting enemies for only the purpose of leveling up. And now here's the giant worm that those uh, elf guys were talking about. And now this was another scene that uh, at one point at one point I would have went all the way back and uh, went to the inn again. But I found out very quickly that as long as I had enough magic to cast the shield spell once I'd be absolutely fine and I could uh, I could kill the worm without a problem. And as you saw I picked up the worm string so now I'll be able to get past that precipice. And of course that means I'll be able to get to the other side of the forest, which... Something happens. Because I, I haven't talked to the guys in the village yet to actually find out at this point what it is, but you'll see in just a minute here. And now I might uh, quickly touch on... Uh, the graphics of this game. Now the graphics of this game for the Turbo Graphics, in my opinion, are really good. Are they as good as the Sega Genesis version or the arcade version? No, but... I honestly think they have their charm. Now since I've finally beaten the... beaten the worm, I'm gonna go back to the go back to the inn and uh, get my now much more health back since I did that um I bought all those uh like special bells that that that, that gnome guy sold what what I was saying is as far as the graphics go these are really great uh, graphics for the turbo graphics version and of course they're very colorful and that's another thing if you Compare this to the Sega Genesis version, this version seems a little bit more colorful due to the uh, limited 64 color palette on the Sega Genesis. And now back at the town. Not a single thing has changed at all. Because, of course, these townspeople had nothing to do with that worm, so... They're not gonna say, Yay, you, uh, you killed the worm, which we don't know about because we don't live where the gnomes live. And, as I'd mentioned in the previous video, Unlike the arcade version, this version doesn't do the thing where, uh, your inns increase in price every time you use them. Also, another thing in the arcade version is you have a time limit, which... For some reason, it says in the arcade version, or it might have been the the history dot dat that the uh, some sort of monster is going to get you if you run out of time. I have not personally tested that, but I'm sure I will once I do the main review on it. But it just, 
considering like how much freedom I feel I have with this version, it just feels kind of weird to be under a time constraint in the arcade version. So that's something I have to definitely say I don't like about the arcade version, but of course, the graphically the Genesis version comes a little bit closer to uh, the arcade than this. Plus, I believe a few of the the levels are like really rearranged here, as compared to the arcade level levels as well. But all in all, this is a very good conversion. And now I'm going to go into the uh, the the town of the gnomes here and uh, show you what what is the thing they want us to do now. Or they call it the forest of the gnomes, and of, of course, it goes without saying only gnomes can enter gnome houses because otherwise you would have to like bend down on your hands and knees and it would be something that would be kind of hard to animate on a 16-bit system. And now there's your, there's your mission given by one of these gnomes. Now, I'm th I keep thinking that that's a, uh, a, uh, spelling error that, uh, they call Chauvin a pendant. And now this is the, uh, the force that you're never supposed to get out. If you just keep walking, it just honestly keeps repeating. So there's no point in doing that, but... Basically what it is, is you're to get this, uh, this potion that's supposed to shrink you to gnome proportions, and then you will be able to get into the gnome houses and get the silver key, which will take you to the next area. And now, just as you would imagine, I, that your character throws the, uh, throws the uh, worm's uh, string and you could get up this area finally. And now this is one of those places where those 255 hit points really come into play. And now the reason I killed these guys is I figured I might as well get some hit points out of this. Now this is another boss which is in no way tied to any of the story elements. It's just this plant boss, which... The funny part is, I had my shield on from earlier, and, uh... It only got rid of my shield. So, uh... It didn't even really hurt my character that much, so even if I didn't have the shield, I wouldn't have been hurt that much. And now, if anybody knows this, I honestly would be curious how you actually kill these these blue spiny creatures. And now, strangely enough, even though I'm fully stocked on antidotes, I was able to take one, so I'm guessing if you have too many, it just goes away. Which, later on in the game, there's an area where I can actually get an elixir, but when I was actually fighting somebody and the elixir got used up, I didn't see two elixirs get used up, so I figured you can only have one elixir at any given time. But the problem is, unless you go to buy an item from an item shop, which I don't believe you can buy elixirs, it looks like if uh, you're, already, you're already stocked on an item and you get another one, it just goes away. So let's say if you can only have 10 of one item and you get the 11th, you don't have 11 in your inventory, you only have 10. But what I was actually doing there is I had noticed that there was there was actually nothing up there, so... I'd gone the wrong way since it was the same place I'd just been. You'll notice now and then in this footage I will use the shield because that really helps for a lot of these enemies that take out a lot of health or they just tend to be really annoying and hard to hit. Especially anything that flies. Although the weird thing is... Those are actually supposed to be harpies, but they actually look like some sort of weird flying deer or lamb or something. So I guess that wasn't the, the best of sprites that they made. Now here's the parts I was looking for. Uh, maybe like a, like a half, like, like, more of a hawk than a harpy. But, um... Oh well, I guess that's how they, uh, they tried to make it look like a harpy from the arcade game. 
And now there's a slight bit of this like platforming. If you remember on the first continent, I had that place where I had to jump over the water. Which wasn't really a big deal, so uh... There's a couple of other little platforming areas, but the good thing is, since the jumping isn't really all that great in this game, at least jumping isn't uh, a big deal here. But now I'm going to go on to the uh, the actual other side of the forest, so I'll see you in the next part of this video.